Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. My name is Doc Asiakubu Zala, bringing you trending stories that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today, and also their opinions on such issues. Come and run under Abuja in 2027. We will fail you, WK Slams FCT Senator Ireti Kingibe. Nangote kicks against CBN's interest rate, says federal government should protect businesses. NMPC declares state of emergency on crude oil production in Nigeria. And on the foreign scene, Trump's sentencing in hush money case postponed until September after Supreme Court immunity ruling. Now, top on what's trending, Federal Capital Territory Minister Nyesom Wike has strongly criticized Senator Ireti Kingi Bay, predicting that she will lose the support of the people in the next election. Senator Kingi Bay had publicly criticized the Wike led administration during a television appearance, declaring that she is not an ally of the minister. In response, during the flag off ceremony of the Mabushi bus terminal in Abuja on Monday, July 1st, Minister Wike expressed disappointment over Kingi Bay's stance. He noted that instead of fostering collaboration with the FCT administration, she appeared more concerned about residents praising President Bola Tenubu's administration. In his words, I challenge that legislator, if you are very popular, 2027, come and run under Abuja, we will fail you. Do you think that what happened last time will happen again? It will not happen again. Luckily for me, I am the FCT minister now, so that is my territory and I'm not afraid. Now, responding to that, a lady said she will contest and win. Abuja is not Rivers. Another person said she didn't even say anything wrong. All she said was he should channel his works to the right places, water, security, etc. Is anything wrong with that? She also mentioned she's not an enemy of the FCT minister. So why is he pained? A guy said, this senator won that election because of the OB movement, but this time around, she'll find it difficult. Now, next on what's trending, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited, has declared a state of emergency regarding crude oil production in Nigeria. The group chief executive officer of the NNPCL, Mele Kari, made this known on Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024, at the inaugural event of the 23rd edition of the Nigeria Oil and Gas Conference and Exhibition, NOG Energy Week. He said the company is in possession of the right tools to combat the factors working against oil production in Nigeria and will work with all partners and stakeholders in ensuring the battle is won. He disclosed that a detailed analysis of assets revealed that Nigeria could conveniently produce 2 million barrels of crude oil per day without deploying new rigs but identified the major impediment to achieving this as the inability of players to act in a timely manner. Now, someone said, a top oil production country does not have enough crude oil to give its refineries. Very soon, we go to import both refined and unrefined crude oil. Another person said, if a whole NNPC is on state of emergency, then what happens to other petroleum companies? Another person opined, the same people declaring the war are the same people responsible for the loopholes in the system. Now, next on what's trending, Ali Kutangote, chairman of the Angote Group, has criticized the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, for raising the interest rate to nearly 30%. Speaking at the Banquet Hall of the State House in Abuja during the opening session of a three-day summit organized by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, on Tuesday, July 2nd, Nangote expressed concerns over the impact of the current interest rate regime on job creation and the growth of the manufacturing sector. The CBN's latest Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, meeting saw the Monetary Policy Rate, MPR, increase for the third consecutive time, rising from 24.75% to 26.25%. Nobody can create jobs with an interest rate of 30%. No growth will happen, Nangote stated, highlighting the challenges faced by manufacturers in competing and expanding under such conditions. He also called for new policies to protect domestic industries and urged the government to provide an enabling environment for existing businesses, particularly manufacturers, to thrive. Now, someone said, for the first time, Angote complained, these governments will touch everybody, both rich and poor. Another person said, Bola Ahmed Tinubu promised to widen the tax and reduce the purchasing power of Nigerians and people heard him loud and clear and voted for him. So he is fulfilling the promises made to the people. If people are not comfortable with it, they should prepare for 2027. Another person wrote, if care is not taken, Dangote's company will leave Nigeria too. 
and the South East Governors Forum on Tuesday resolved to visit President Bola Tinubu and interface with the federal government to secure the release of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu. The governors made the resolution at their meeting in Enugu on Tuesday. The meeting, which lasted about six hours, had in attendance all the five South East Governors, Peter Mba of Enugu, Alex Oti Abia, Professor Charles Soludu Anambra, Francis Nwifuru Ebonyi and Senator Hope Uzodima of Imo State. In a five-point communique jointly signed by all the governors, the forum resolved to activate actionable plans with a view to implementing the report of the South East Security and Economic Summit held in Oweri in September last year. Now someone said, a good way to go and also all legislators should join in and the government will know it's a one-voice thing and you're united on this issue. Someone alleged, he burned down Lagos State Properties and TVC, the nation newspaper. He should provide the properties he destroyed. What of military and police he killed? They need to look into those things. Another person said, Nam Dikanu Mata, no concern us now. Now how to better the economy, make food price come down. And the sixth prosecution witness, Idi Musa, in the trial of Ismaila Mustafa, a.k.a. Morfa, on Monday, told Justice Mojishola Dada of the Special Offenses Court sitting in Ikeja, Lagos, how 35 billion naira was found in two bank accounts linked to the defendant. The Lagos Zonal Command of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had on January 12, 2022, arraigned Momfa alongside his company, Ismailo Global Investment Limited, on an eight-count charge bordering on conspiracy to launder funds obtained through unlawful activity, retention of proceeds of criminal conduct, failure to disclose assets and property, possession of documents containing false pretenses, and use of property derived from unlawful act. One of the counts read, Ismail and Mustafa Ahmadu Muhammad at large and Ismailo Global Investment Limited sometime in 2016 in Lagos within the jurisdiction of this honorable court conspired amongst yourselves to conduct financial transactions to the tune of 5 billion 998 million 884 thousand 653 naira and 18 kobo with the intent of promoting the carrying on of specified unlawful activities to wit obtaining by false pretense. Now someone said, seeing such amount in his account does not mean it's bad. Besides, when he has zero balance, did you guys trace it too? Another person said, 90 billion naira plus from ex-accountant general of the federation is yet to be found, but EFCC are quick in recovering non-politicians' frauds. Another person said, what about someone that stole 85 billion naira from Nigeria? You don't catch him. Now let's take a short break and when we return, you get to know why Thames is trending. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's Newsfeed. Now, Admiral Alison Amechi Namadweke has filed a petition in the Lagos State High Court seeking a legal declaration to end his marriage to Deizani Alison Madweke while also requesting that she stop using his first and last name. In Madweke's petition, for justification of marriage, he prayed the court to order the former Minister of Petroleum Resources to revert to her maiden name, Agama. The ex-chief of naval staff argues that Deizani's ongoing use of his name, despite their marriage being legally over, is damaging to his reputation and could lead to unintended consequences, including mistaken liability, particularly given the corruption allegations against her. Mario Kwe is a former military governor of Anambra and Imo State. He married Deizani on June 30th, 1999. Now someone said, this is one of the reasons women don't want to change their names anymore. Another person said, that man is from my village, Inye in Enugu State. His integrity is top notch. He was once a governor and you can imagine during his tenure, he no even loots. His house still remains the same. His wife stained his white shirt. Another person wrote, he was her best friend those days in NNPC. He literally visited her every AK market day. Now the chips are down. This woman gave you so many mega contracts, sir. Why do her dirty? A Nigerian singer, Thames, was one of the winners of the 2024 BET Awards, scooping the Dr. Bobby Jones Best Gospel Inspirational Prize. Temi Lade Openi's Me and You beats big stars such as Kirk Franklin, Sissy Winans, Maverick City Music, and others to land the prize held at the Peacock Theatre in downtown Los Angeles on Monday. In 2022, the Grammy Award winner won the BET Awards for Best International Act and Best Collaboration for Whiskey's Essence. Black Entertainment Television established the award in 2001 to celebrate the achievements of Black 
entertain us. Now someone said, I never knew Thames was a gospel singer. What God does not do does not exist. Another person said, really crazy things are happening. Now I see why Thames sang the song. Another wrote, main reason why you guys shouldn't be worried about Grammy and co. Now a lady has said in a video posted on her Instagram page that as a man, if you do not have up to 500,000 naira in your account, you are a girl. Let's take a look. So I was saying, as a man, if you don't have up to 500k in your account, you are a girl. You are not even up to a woman. You are a girl. So I and Perpetua will be going out to have breakfast today. Perpetua drives very well. That's why I want her to drive. I think that one come in now. Babe, can you help me with 20k? So as I didn't What of 3k? What's your name? Pepe, baby. Pepe, baby, for short. Let's go. Now, a lady said, I beg, make nobody pressure my brother, so. Another said, it's a double standard for me. 80% of Nigerian youths don't have up to 100,000 naira in their savings account. We are too poor as a country for the standards we set. Another wrote, she's right, but at the same time, she's not. It shouldn't be coming from you. Your dad is at home sleeping. Stray bullets go one kill him because himself no get 500,000 naira for Azar. And now on the foreign scene, Trump will not be sentenced on his business fraud conviction until September. A New York judge ruled Tuesday in the wake of Monday's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity. The delay in sentencing means that the former president is likely to escape any concrete punishment for his felony conviction during the summer. At the same time that Trump's election bid has been boosted by President Joe Biden's debate flop that has Democrats wondering whether to replace their nominee. Trump was scheduled to be sentenced on July 11th. Judge Joanne Marchand said the former president will now be sentenced on September 18 if such is still necessary. The announcement underscores the far-reaching implications of Sunday's Supreme Court ruling in which the court's reservative wing found that presidents have absolute immunity for core presidential duties. Now someone said, could you imagine if an ordinary citizen did half of what he did? This is beyond pathetic. Another said, Trump is right about one thing, the system is rigged in his favor. Another wrote, interesting thing is this particular case happened while he was still a private citizen. Not sure how that applies to this case, nothing official here. And now to a funny video of a boy refusing to take sweets from his dad because his mom asked him not to. Take a look. My mom can know. Yeah, but daddy said you could have it. No, my mom can know. I'm in charge around here, you can have the lollipop. You can have the lollipop. I'm in charge. I'm gonna choke. You gonna choke? Yeah. You're not gonna choke. I'm gonna watch you. No, I don't want it. Why you don't want it? Because my mom said no. I'm in charge of your mommy. I make the rules, not her. You don't want it? And that's it. You're up to date with trending stories across the world. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. Until next time, goodbye.